Hey everyone, Harrison 101 back at it once again with a brand new video for you and on this video we're bringing back WWE 12. Now you may remember me telling you I wasn't going to make consistent WWE 12 videos, I'm already running quite a few series on this channel at the moment. But I did say I'd be using it now and again to cover pay-per-views and there's a major pay-per-view coming up this Sunday tomorrow. Um, WWE's Tables, Adders and Shares 2011, the third TLC event. Um, in the history of the WWE, going to be from uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and um, one of the most interesting stories right off the bat to get into here is that John Cena will not be at this pay-per-view at all on this one, which is going to be very peculiar. I can't remember the last time he actually has not appeared on a pay-per-view at all. I mean, they, they could insert him in somewhere, but it looks as if, if you read the tweets and if you read what you hear on, on the dirt sheets or whatever, it looks as if John Cena will not be on the card at all, and he won't be at the pay-per-view in for the, um, at all. So, it looks as if... For the first time, I think since 2008, Cena will not be wrestling at a pay-per-view. I guess you could count Survivor Series 2010 when he was the referee for the Barrett Orton match, but um, yeah, it looks like Cena will not be on the card at all on this one, which is very interesting. Something you hardly ever see. Who knows? That might spike a buy rate. <laughs> I mean, a lot of internet fans don't like John Cena understandable he's the face of the company he gets the most exposure many people don't like that so who knows it, it might incre it might increase the WWE's really stale looking buy rates right now anyway on to the main card and getting into it only six matches on this one but uh, they all look pretty good to me so let's have a look and uh, let's dissect these shall we what should probably open the show will be Cody Rhodes versus Booker T for the WWE Intercontinental Championship like I said before in my last WWE 12 video, I am loving the work of Cody Rhodes. He's grown so much in the last couple of years from being that guy in Legacy. I mean, let's be honest. When Legacy broke up in 2010, show of hands, who actually thought Cody Rhodes would end up being the biggest star in the company when they split up? All signs pointed to Ted DiBiase being that breakout singles guy. Instead, it's been Cody Rhodes who's been working this fantastic vanity gimmick. And, by the way, I think it's great we're getting Booker T back in the ring. Love Booker T. I've always loved Booker T. Very entertaining, very underappreciated, and very um, underrated wrestler. I mean, when he came back at the Rumble this year, the pop was was huge. Seeing him do his old offense in the bookend and and the scissor kick and and um, the spinner Rooney, it was so good to see Booker T back in there. It just brought me back to my childhood. Love that. I think Cody Rhodes is obviously going to wing as they're going to keep the ball rolling with him, and obviously Booker T is the commentator. But um, I, I would have no complaints if Booker T got one more title win, maybe, maybe a feel-good title win for a month or two. Would you believe, I think I think um, Rhodes is the longest reigning champion of any kind in the company right now, would you believe? Because these belts have been going back and going back, you know, back and forth like a hot potato right now. But I think Cody Rhodes will retain, should be entertaining, and Booker T I think can still go. I'd like, I'm interested to see how what he does now he's back in there. So um, that's going to be an interesting one to, to uh, watch out for. Randy Orton versus Wade Barrett in a tables match. Um, Orton, I think, is my wrestler of the year. Randy Orton has had a fantastic year. He's been putting guys over. He's had the best WWE feud. I think his five-month run with Christian, I think, was superb. I mean, they had maybe they had one too many singles matches. But Orton has done a really good job of getting other guys over and trying to bring him to his level this year. Guys like Christian, guys like uh, Cody Rhodes, guys like um, Dolph Ziggler, and now Wade Barrett. And Barrett, who's been back and forth like a pendulum all year, in the last probably year and a half, ever since he was head of the Nexus last year. Um, now he's getting a good chance to, to uh, be in another good you know, pay-per-view match with, with you know one of the company's biggest stars. I can't see Orton losing to Barrett twice, but there's potential in this one. I just hope Barrett as in, can improve a bit more, take it to that next level, because I think Barrett is, is the complete package. If he can just improve his, his in-ring ability a little bit, I think it's a fantastic promo color, great look, good charisma. Um, just a little bit lacking in the ring for me. Hasn't really had that elite level match besides maybe John Cena at a Hell in, at a, Hell in a Cell 2010. They had that great back and forth match they had there. Um, but again, it's, it's a tables match. There'll probably be a, a good few near you know, near misses and all that in a tables match as you do. Could be some interference here and there. So I'm, I'm going to say I think Barrett will win but via shenanigans. 
By the way, I'm going to turn this into a, into a prediction thing. I'm going to review my predictions. Maybe have another WWE 12 video on uh, Monday or Tuesday reviewing the pay-per-view as well. So look out for that as well. Um, anyway, Dolph Ziggler versus Zack Ryder for the United States Championship. Dolph Ziggler, I think, could be the best wrestler on the planet right now. Purely because I, I think he is pulling in some fantastic work. He's bumping like a pro. He he is in the ring as good as anybody right now on promos. He's got the right guy, but he's got the right person behind him. He's doing a fantastic job right now. Dolph Ziggler, another Wrestler of the Year candidate. I think it was the PWR show Wrestler of the Year, and I completely understand why Ziggler is. His work rate has been unlike anybody in the companies this year. He's doing a superb job. I'm one of the few guys out there who doesn't really like Zack Ryder, but um, I I can see him winning the big one here because the internet has really pulled behind Ryder recently, and hopefully with maybe 10 or so minutes, that can be a very good match. Triple H versus Kevin Nash is my only real blip on this card. It's a Sledge had a Lama match. It's a ladder match, but you have to win by pinfall or submission. And a sledgehammer, it will be above the ring and can be used as a weapon once a participant grabs it. I don't know if there's anybody if there's anybody out there are TNA fans, but um, think the Stairway to Janice match from the whole effing show from 2010 between RVD and Abyss. Same kind of deal here. Use the ladder, go up, grab the weapon, and then you can use it to win by pinfall or submission. Kind of weird, but... Um, I'm not really wanting to see Kevin Nash back in the ring, in all honesty. But um, Triple H is Triple H. He's the ring general. He can always wrestle a solid match. So I don't think it'll be too bad. Um, I think, obviously, Triple H will win. There could be some shenanigans in this one, too. But I think Triple H should win and will probably win clean, purely because he's Triple H. Um, Mark Henry versus The Big Show. Chairs match for the World Heavyweight Championship. This feud's been great. Mark Henry's done a fantastic job as the heel. He's been a superb um, monster heel character. Um, the way the WWE has built him has been superb this year. Big Show is Big Show. Always entertaining. Always, you know, serviceable in the ring. I don't see how they're going to work the chairs gimmick here. I think chairs is kind of a pointless gimmick, to be honest with you. Chairs actually haven't really gone down well on these pay-per-views. I know Cena and Barrett had one last year, and then you had... Um, Taker and Batista have won the year before when they've never really been that great. I don't see this one's going to be any better, but uh, maybe we'll see. I've been quite forgiving towards these two. They've, they've put on good matches considering there's nearly a thousand pounds in that ring when they wrestle each other. So I think Henry will retain here. Should be entertaining. Um, finally, we have the main event. CM Punk versus The Miz versus Alberto Del Rio. A table, ladders and chairs, triple threat match for the WWE Championship. CM Punk is the champion. The internet obviously is ecstatic about this. They're probably creaming themselves just thinking about it. Um, I can't see The Miz winning this one because The Miz is, is he just isn't he just doesn't scream main event caliber guy to me. He never really has. Didn't really work very hard when he was WWE champion earlier in the year. Um, he's he's a kind of a repetitive promo guy. You know what he reminds me of? The Miz reminds me of John Cena, but worse in every way. He's like John Cena, but he's not as good a talker. He's not as good a, as a guy in the ring. He's not as great in terms of charisma. He's just not as good as Cena at all, but he's molded in the same way. And Del Rio's got half a chance of winning this one, but I, I, I really don't see him taking the belt off Punk because, you know, he, he's very hot right now in the company. It's clearly being established right now as the number two babyface considering John Cena isn't on the card. Or so we think. I uh, just want to say as well that um, I'm really digging this card. It's a great looking card. Um, the, the Triple H, um, Trevin Nash is the only blip. But I think there's a lot of potential on this one. Even though the build up towards this show has kind of been terrible. Um, the TV shows, the Raws and the Smackdowns have been very great trying to hype this one up. But it, it's got a lot of potential and I'm looking forward to watching this one on Sunday. Let me know what you think. Are you, are you digging the card? Um... Give me some predictions if you want. Let me know what you think of the show if you're watching this after Sunday. And I'll catch you later this week. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Harrison101 and Sayonara.